Everybody, please welcome to the stage, Danette Smith. <laughs> How y'all doing? I hear really awkward ninth grade classes at 7 a.m. on a Monday morning, so I'm more excited than that. We are educators. We can sound excited for education. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Danette Smith. Um, I am a poet, I am an educator, I am a human being and a black man. Um, I have come to you today to talk about student voice. Um, I'm going to try to lead this talk today through my own pedagogy. Um, I don't have data because I don't have data yet, um, but I have stories for you and that's what I ask of my students. I have my story, I have myself, and I have the ability to reflect on the work that I've done. Um, start with myself. Who am I? I am a mama's boy. I am a St. Paul native. I am very, very black um, in a political sense and a racial sense. I am an educator. I am a queer man. I am hopelessly romantic and very stubborn to go on dates. And that is who I bring into the classroom every day. Maybe not the date part. Um, and all those voices fight to speak. And luckily, I've lived a life where I've been able to speak to all those voices and all those identities in me, and it's my work, to hear those voices coming from all my students. Um, I want to backtrack, talk a little bit about where I come from and what's grounding all my work. In third grade, I could not read at all. Spelled my name wrong, I could barely tell you what it was. I didn't understand letters, I didn't know how to put things together. And it wasn't necessarily that I wasn't smart, I knew I was, I was bored. School was boring. I didn't want to read about princesses and magical frogs or look at these storybooks that look nothing like the family or my family or the places that I came from. It wasn't what I was interested in either. They tried to get me to read things like Goosebumps because that was supposed to be cool in the 90s, but I didn't like ghosts. No, they weren't real. I had a really Christian black grandma. She wanted me to believe in ghosts unless it was holy. Um, I didn't connect to any of these things. And finally, a former Miss Minnesota winner, Miss Della Vadova, my third grade teacher, God bless her, uh, asked me a question that I have never been asked before. What is it that you want to read? And it wasn't about what was available in her classroom or the three books that some reading specialist had laid out in front of me about locusts and a princess and a castle. Um, but what do you really want to read? And I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to tell her. I shouted out the first thing that came to my mind, I want to read about video games. She said, okay. And I went home and I had all these video game magazines that I could only look at the pictures of and think that they were cool and know that I wanted to buy that game. And she gave me access to something that I actually believed in. She worked with me throughout that year. And by the end of that year, I went from not being able to read at all to reading at a fifth grade level. And it's all because of her work and her asking me a question and believing that answer. Flash forward to ninth grade, I am now technically good at school. I am the C student in all the advanced classes. Um, I hate school. Once again, I find this boring. I'm not learning about anything. I'm just learning how to give the teachers back what they're giving me. I wind up in this weird, wacky theater class, and I knew it wasn't weird or wacky, but I didn't have the language at the time to say how transformative it really was gonna be for me. It was a social justice-centered education program. It was awesome. I spent the first day, I think the teacher was about five minutes late, just rolling around on the ground screaming, which is pretty much a good analogy about who I was at 14, rolling around on the ground screaming about anything. And the teacher came in and she started her work and eventually she asked all of us, what do you wanna talk about? What do you want to perform about? And I was not ready for that question. And it's funny how really simple questions and knowing that somebody is sincere in asking you that can completely change your mindset as a student. That, work, that year we created, and throughout my four years of, co of high school, I stayed with that teacher, and we created brilliant work about issues that we found relevant. We wrote and performed our own plays and our own poems, and that set me along a whole artistic path, but a whole creative path and a whole critical path in my education from that class and learning that my voice was truly valued, that I had something to say. 
I started doing better in all of my subject areas. I started to become invested in school as long as I had somebody there to work with me that was invested in my ideas and not interested in teaching me what I needed to learn, but helping me access what was already within myself. When I went to college, I, was, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison to be a part of the only hip-hop scholarship program in the nation. I did not at the time associate Madison, Wisconsin with hip-hop. Um, maybe cheese, maybe good beer that I wasn't supposed to be drinking as a freshman, but definitely not hip-hop. And when we showed up there, once again, I was presented with a question that I had no idea how to answer. What do you want to build? And with that program, the first wave program at Madison, Wisconsin, we built something that is now seven years strong. I was part of the very first year, and we helped each other access our creativity, not just in terms of art, but our science majors who were also artists, having them go off and explore brilliant, brilliant experiments and questions that they had, and we learned how to access each other and how to collaborate and how to talk and how to reflect, and oh my God, it was brilliant! All because somebody asked us a question and didn't, we didn't, we knew that we didn't have to say the right thing, but we had to say what felt right to us. And that's why I came back to St. Paul to try to infuse some of that energy into this space. I am a cultural specialist for St. Paul Public Schools. I go into rooms that look like the United Nations that usually have a syllabus that looks like the Senate. Um, and I ask students what they want to learn. And I work with teachers to, one, build community. Um, sometimes I come into these classrooms um, even back when I was working in Madison, students have been together the whole year. You ask them in April what the name of the person three desks away from them is, they don't know. But if you actually do the work of community building, they get to connect. They get to learn that they are not as different as they think they are. We work on context and content. We bring in text that students can actually see themselves in. If you have a classroom full of young Hmong women and young black men and you're reading Faulkner? might not be the best idea of how to access these students. We work on performance and voice, and that doesn't mean students are hopping on stage every chance they get, even though I encourage them to. But that means that students are allowed to access their voices. They're able to be the source of the information. They are the creators of their own education in these classrooms that I go in. And we make it an equal playing field, not where the teacher decides what's best, but where we as a community decide what we need to learn and what is important. And that's so simple. A lot of the ideas shared today have been so simple, but so hard to achieve. I mean, look around this room, right? This is the education context, a speckling of people of color, maybe three or four students in this whole crowd. And what are we really trying to change? If we are going to effectively change the outcomes for our students. Not only do we have to invite them to the table, but we actually have to be willing to listen. Thank you. <laughs>